If you're into 3D printing, everyone always says they're printing with PLA because it's the easiest material to print with. However, PLA has its downsides. And one of these downsides is that PLA is fairly brittle. On top of that, PLA is not very temperature resistant. If you leave PLA in your car on a warm summer day, you might come back to a pile of mush or that part's just deforming. So if you need that part for something structural, for example, holding your phone, then unfortunately on your drive back, you won't have a holder anymore. When I started 3D printing maybe about four or five years ago, there were two materials that I knew of, and those are just PLA and ABS. And the reason why not many people print with ABS, and I was also turned off from printing with ABS, is because of the horrendous smell. But ABS has some pretty nice properties where the parts are a lot more flexible, and you can make hinges or snap-ons. Recently though, I discovered a new material, PETG, and that's somewhere in between PLA and ABS. It's not as brittle as PLA, it withstands higher temperatures than PLA. At the same time, it doesn't smell when it prints, just like ABS. Your print bed doesn't need to be as high a temperature as ABS, maybe about 20 to 30 degrees lower. So I decided to go on this journey to learn how to print with PETG, and honestly, I thought it was gonna be really easy, but I ran into a lot of problems. And in my previous video, I talked about how I got rid of blobbing and stringing with this one technique so if you want you can check that out in the top right corner but today I'm going to be comparing six different types of PETG and they range anywhere from $26 Canadian to about $36. For today's experiment we're going to be using my new Adventure 4 printer as well as the settings that I got from Simplify 3D which I discovered in my previous Petchy video. The test specimens that we're going to be printing are a 6mm post there's two of them spread out by about 20 millimeters. After that, we're gonna be doing a benchy test, which has a lot of great features that stress test your printer. We'll be scrutinizing each one for stringing, for blobbing, for any sort of layer inconsistencies, overhangs, bridging, as well as infill or top infill finish. We're gonna look at some text details, and finally, we're gonna be looking at just how well the features are printed. So over here to my right, we've got the six boxes of filament that I've tested out so far. The brands are Overture, Polymaker, Rep Wrap. We've got Hatchbox, we've got Duramic, and we've got Airy One. I've got three of them in black. I've got one in blue, one in clear, as well as one in white. I'll throw up all the prices on the screen so that you know which one ranks where. First, let's start off with the cheapest filament and see what kind of print we get from that. So first, we're gonna be talking about the Rep Wrap filament. And this is the row right here. Right now, if you take a look down the spool, you can see that the winding of the spool is fairly consistent. But if you look on the sides, you can see some of the filament fibers crossing one another. I don't think this will cause the problem printing down the road where the filament gets tied in a knot and your extruder isn't unable to push it through. But I guess I'll find out and see. Now, if we take my calipers and measure the diameter of this filament, looking at it so far, we get 1.75 bang on. Measuring elsewhere on the spool, I'm also getting 1.75, 1.76. So it seems to be fairly consistent across the entire roll. Now time to throw it onto the printer. Here I've got the Duramic filament in my hands and it also costs the exact same price as the Rep Wrapper, $26.99. Now taking a look at the spool right off the bat, it's definitely not as nicely wound as a Rep Wrapper. It seems like the filament's kind of going all over the place and it's crossing often. When sampling this filament with calipers, I'm seeing 1.75 right at the beginning of the roll. If I go elsewhere in the filament roll, I'm seeing 1.77. So it seems like this filament also is fairly consistent around the 1.75 mark. All right, time to go throw this onto the printer. Here we've got the Overture filament and it's actually got the cheapest packaging. It doesn't even have its own logo printed on the box, but honestly, who really cares about the box? But it comes in at $26.99 as well. I got the black version and looking at the windings right off the bat, honestly it looks pretty terrible. It looks like everything is going all over the place and very similar to the TPU roll that I received recently. But if you read reviews online, people always have a great opinion of Overture. It's kind of the best bang for your buck sort of filament brand out there. Now measuring the diameter of this filament, I get 1.76. And if we jump to another spot on the spool, I get 1.76 as well. So fairly consistent across the roll. Let's go throw this puppy onto the printer as well. Actually, before doing that, I just wanted to mention to you guys, all Overture filaments actually come with a build tack bed. It's 200 by 200 millimeters. Next up, we've got the Air One Petchy, and this is $29.49. It came in black, and looking at the spool right off the bat, if you can see, it's got very nice windings on it. Taking my first filament diameter measurement, I'm seeing 1.77. So let's go throw this onto the printer and do our test prints. For our second most expensive filament, we've got the Polymaker here. 
I got the Polymaker in white and it cost me $29.99 in Canadian dollars. It's got very nice packaging, the box is branded, it's got a cool sticker, and same with the filament roll. Looking at the windings right here, it looks very similar to the Airy one as well as Hatchbox. So I'm pretty impressed with this filament so far based on the looks. We'll have to see how it prints out. Last but not least, we've got the Hatchbox here. Hatchbox is one of the best filaments out there supposedly, and it costs the most out of all six of these filaments here. It was $36.99 for this roll. And from a more premium filament, we expect the windings to be pretty much flawless, and in fact, they are. I got this filament in blue because if I got the black, it was gonna be $55.99. So since I didn't really care too much about the color, I was like, why not save like $20 and just get the blue instead? Now taking a measurement of the filament, I'm seeing around 1.74 here. Again, these windings are super nice and I don't want to destroy them, so that's the one measurement we'll take for the hatchbox. Now let's go throw this premium filament onto the printer. So it's been a day or two since I filmed the first part of this video, but now I've got all the benches printed as well. I printed a moving tabletop and you'll see that as I'm showing shots of the different benches. So now starting off with the six millimeter posts, we're gonna compare all six of them and see what the difference is. Now what I'm looking for here is to see if there are any filament strands or strings that are hanging off or that actually bridge across from one tower to the next. Out of all six of them, the Polymaker is the only one that doesn't have any signs of filament strings hanging off the inside edge of the circles. The rest of the six, including the Hatchbox at $36.99, also has stringing. And I'll show you those pictures up close on the screen. Next, moving over to the benches. We're gonna compare the bottoms of all the benches to see how legible the text is and to see if the infill lines are solid and there's no gaps in between. So the first thing that I noticed is the Polymaker text, the bridging that goes across the text got squished down into the first layer where the text was supposed to be outlined. So that was the only filament that got compressed a little bit too much. And I don't think I tweaked any of the Z settings, but this could possibly be tuned out if you increase your Z height a little bit. Next, we have the Dramic and the Hatchbox Benchies, and their infill was a little bit sparse for my liking. You can definitely see spaces in between each infill line. The Rep Wrapper, Overture, and Air One filaments, the infill lines are pretty much squished together. There could be a small amount of tuning done on each of these filaments to bring the nozzle maybe by about 0.04 millimeters closer to the bed. But other than that, I would say these three filaments have the best bottoms. Now looking at the side of the hull of all the benches. So the first one that really stands out to me is the Dramic, where there's this huge strand of filament just sticking out the side. Not really sure where this came from, especially because this is near the middle. If it was closer to the bottom, it could possibly could have been the skirt. Other than that, the other features that I'm seeing on the side are these dimples, which is fairly consistent across all the prints. And this might be due to my coasting setting, which basically stops printing for the last like 0.3 millimeters of the outline. So that dimple could be that 0.3 millimeters where the nozzle is not actually extruding any filament. There's also some blobbing that's seen across most of the prints, maybe one or two blobs per bench. On the Overture filament, as well as the Polymaker filament, I got a couple longer strings that came off, but they're not as noticeable as the Dramic. Now looking at the side profile of the benches, seeing where that overhang comes up, I can see that all the overhangs look pretty much exactly the same. None of them have any sort of serious droopiness. Looking at the text that's supposed to be at the back of the benchy, saying 3D benchy, I think, all the text looks pretty much the same, all illegible. I think this might be more of a printer thing where the printer had a little bit of ringing and didn't print this text very well. Now, if we look at that small circle outlet at the very back of the benchy as well, the Everyone and the Polymaker filament produced the best circle there. Every other filament had a slight droop at the top of the circle. It may be a little hard to see from the camera shots though. Now turning our attention over to the deck of the boat. When the printer head moves from the edges or the railings of the boat to the center cabin, there's a lot of stringing between those two features. It doesn't matter which filament I use, all the stringing is pretty much the same. As well, we're seeing a lot of stringing in the archways of the door to the cabin. If I were to really look closely, I would say the airy one and the rep wrapper filament had the most stringing and the other four had pretty much equal stringing. Looking at the rear cylindrical feature, we've got the Hatchbox, Ceramic, Overture, as well as the Polymaker filament having blobs on that feature. 
and the hatch box also has a bit of stringing. But the other two, which is the airy one and rep wrapper, the print quality of that rear cylindrical feature is fairly consistent. The only thing is those two suffer from stringing. Now turning our attention back over to the front of the boat, the two circles, I would say the airy one had the best circles because there's no stringing within that feature. All the other prints had stringing or some of them had a little filament strand sticking out there. Looking at the door post of the cabin, I can see there's some inconsistencies in the filament lines. And this is happening across all six boats. And this might just be a limitation of the Adventure 4 and how well it's been calibrated. Taking a look at the overhang and the doorway arches, as well as the rear circular window, all those features printed without any problem. There was no sort of drooping in the archways or drooping in the circular feature. The bridging of the front square window was done very well on all six prints. If we look at the steering wheel inside the cabin, this feature is pretty much printed exactly the same across all six filaments. There's no noticeable difference there. It all had the outer rim feature as well as that inner circle that stick out a little bit. Finally, moving to the top of the benchy, all the tops of the benchy look pretty much exactly the same. Again, there's not much difference in quality there. Some of the chimneys have a bit of a blob here and there. That just might have been some buildup on the nozzle which was deposited on the outer layer. And it just so happened for this print, the blob happened. But I think that could happen with any filament if you print enough benchies. The last thing that I want to mention is the Duramic, Overture, as well as the Polymaker filaments. They all had more of a matte finish. The Airy one, Hatchbox, as well as Duramic filaments, they all had more of a shiny finish to them. Okay, so you guys probably noticed that in my prints, there's some blobbing in there and it showed like the six millimeter post, they didn't blob, but somehow the benchy did. So I'm actually working on benchies next door to me right now and I've got a lot more developed there. I think I know what the reason is why I'm seeing those like indents into the print as well as some of the random blobs. Basically I have Simplified 3D set up to optimize the print speed so I could start anywhere. But instead, if I select a point where I want all the start points as close to that point, then we're gonna get actually a fairly nice finish on the benchy. So I'll compile all those other benchies in a future video and share with you my perfect petchy settings, which should be coming soon. So in conclusion, after doing all these tests on these six filaments, printing out benchies, as well as the six millimeter posts, I don't think that there's too much difference between these filaments. One didn't stand out significantly more than the other, which I was a little bit surprised. Everyone online was saying Hatchbox is like a premium filament when, you, when it comes to Amazon filaments, but I didn't find that to be the case. In some aspects, the Hatchbox performed a little better, but in other aspects, it didn't. And I think that at the end of the day, if you're willing to sit down and tune each filament, then you can get pretty much similar results. It was clear from my caliper measurements that these filaments were about 1.75 millimeters in diameter. So I think we've come a very long way in 3D printing technology where factories are able to produce very consistent diameter filament. And now it just kind of comes down to brand and marketing. So for those of you guys who are looking to save a penny here and there, definitely just go with the cheapest filaments out there and just try to tune the crap out of it, especially for PETG. All six of these filaments, if any of these interest you, I've got links down below in the description for Canada and the USA. If you have any questions that I haven't addressed in this video yet, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, as well as remember to like and subscribe because this video took a while to make. I've got a couple other videos up on the screen here, one related to Pet G, so you can check that one out if you're interested. And that's a wrap.